Hello and welcome to Performance Guru's channel. I'm here with Professor R. Vaidyanathan, uh, Professor of Finance at an Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. Uh, professor, um, I would like to draw your attention to the oil prices. Uh, ever since uh, the United States has uh, discovered this new method called fracking to come up with uh, uh, you know, crude oil extraction, uh, it has been a counterweight to OPEC's uh, power in terms of being able to dictate the price of oil. And now add to this mix the fact that Russia wants to sell uh, oil, plus now Iran will be coming online yeah. very soon, and hopefully Iraq will continue to pump more. Uh, how do you see the oil scenario play out in the next 18 months, and then maybe long term up to five years? In the short term, I think very important is uh, the to, to, to a good extent, this uh, fracking has really put uh, pressure on the OPEC. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, US is always, as usual, very intelligent mm -hmm. and clever. It has not touched its reserve. It has a huge amount of reserves actually. That is correct. It's not, uh, it's uh, the, not even the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. actually. If they really do that, the oil prices will phenomenally crash. They know that. Right. So they are not, uh, but now what happens is, uh, Russia is uh, more enthusiastic mm -hmm. and Iran actually will enter on a large scale, mm -hmm. which will be actually beneficial to India, mm -hmm. because Iran and India can get into what we were discussing in another context, the right. butter type of a system actually. Mm -hmm. And Iran has always been more uh, you know, friendly with uh, Indian concerns and Indian requirements actually. Mm -hmm. So I think the oil prices uh, will be on the lower side only, mm -hmm. not on the higher side. Mm -hmm. Over told that peak oil, maybe that is over now, mm. not uh, anymore. Mm. And uh, from that point of view, it will be advantageous to India actually, mm -hmm. because it will ease the pressure on our uh, import bill, right. and it will also ease the pressure on domestic inflation. Mm -hmm. And if we are going to grow at anywhere between 8 to 9 percent, right. our requirement is going to shoot up like anything, right. on a continuous basis. Mm. So from that point of view also, it will be very useful. Mm. The second is, I think uh, more uh, dramatic uh, changes could come about, mm -hmm. maybe in the next three to five years, in terms of genuine alternatives that are economically feasible for oil. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of work is going on right. in terms of hydrogen. That is correct. In terms of, yeah. and the US, I think, uh, some estimate I was reading, I couldn't believe it, uh, something like, uh, uh, you know, seven to eight billion US dollar mm -hmm. uh, is in research. Mm -hmm. in investment research in the area of oil only. Uh -huh, I see. Uh, regarding, you know, possibilities of fuel cell, mm -hmm. you know, all type of things are getting, uh, I think I am sure you know, I maybe you are also using this uh, Tesla's uh, right, attempt right, at right. electric uh, thing. Yes. Quite a lot of people are happy about it. Yes. And there are hybrid models which Japanese are developing. Right, right. You can have both uh, electric right. at, and I am sure something or other will click yeah, you, you in the next five years you, you're right and right. which will be mm -hmm. as uh, tectonic change mm -hmm. as your uh, Bill Gates uh, Microsoft I see which altered the entire way in which the world is functioning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and out of that so many other things came True. your cell True. phone and basically the internet based activity and uh, this uh, desktop and uh, laptops and other things right. have changed that mm -hmm. I have a feeling in the next uh, four to five years mm -hmm. a similar thing will happen for oil mm -hmm. and which of course light heartedly one can say may make many of these uh, Middle East countries go back to their uh, tent and uh, camels <laughs> right because if you look at it objectively if you remove oil there is nothing there right right as uh, one commentator wrote, I think it it was uh, in uh, New York Times, mm -hmm. Roger, or, uh, I'm not getting his name, anyhow, mm -hmm. he wrote very nicely that time when uh, Kuwait was getting invaded. I see, by Iraq. Iraq, mm -hmm. and you know, immediately everybody reacted and other right, right. He wrote, if only in Middle East carrots are only being grown, mm -hmm. who will be enthusiastic <laughs> about them? Not <laughs> even <laughs> rabbits <laughs> to get into that. So, no, I, what I want to say is, just like single product companies, mm -hmm. when they are in uh, thrust uh, right. crisis area, right. they face very severe problems. That is right. And many of the single product companies over a period of time have, you know, tried to become something like multi-product yeah. or forward. Or if you look at Middle East, it's basically a single product company. Mm -hmm. So, once that importance of that product goes away, mm -hmm. 
and i think it would be a very catastrophic thing for them mm. i can you know visualize what would be the nature of the impact and other thing. wow <laughs> yeah le le let's hope that you know it happens in a way that is uh, you know uh, you know useful for everybody yeah. so maybe there is a uh, an equilibrium point that sure you it, i don't think it will be you know it will be allowed to go it because one thing is middle east is a very major flash point correct if this is also added to that right this uh, oil issue mm. then it will they may go bon bonkers actually <laughs> so i'm sure us and various other globe including china mm. will try to make them reach a new equilibrium right. in a very you know sustained fashion mm -hmm. uh, in a very balanced fashion right. not in a very violent or you know that type of fashion mm -hmm. but i think oil as a uh, commodity mm -hmm. Uh, which is uh, more or less governing this the uh, world uh, uh, prices and world uh, you know, strategies mm -hmm. from say around 73 74 around right, opec right. form yeah, yeah, yeah opec form i think that will come to an end in another 4 5 years 4 5 years this is my forecast and 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 if you have to define a range so the next 10 years do you think oil will today is like 45 so yeah. something like that so do you think it'll ever cross 75 again no i don't think so, so do it will be in the range of 45 to maybe 35 to say 60 years on 50 in that range okay so it's pretty benign a small band very by small band and very benign only okay. it i think it has how to put it it has lost its uh, vigor and aggression mm -hmm. oil itself has lost its vigor and aggression right if you throw a matchstick in the oil mm -hmm. it, it's not going to burn as uh, <laughs> you know enthusiastically <laughs> brightly <laughs> as it was doing in the 80s right right um, and just to add to your point about hydrogen fuel cell cars uh, i believe one company is already leasing these cars in united states oh and toyota has announced by october they're going to start selling it in in select markets in uh, la area as well oh. as in uh, bay area yes uh, the, the reason is you know you have to have hydrogen fuel uh, uh, recharge pumps correct and the interesting part about that is it only takes 5 minutes to uh, fill up the tank. Oh, very nice. So that means you know it's like putting gas, you know. Yes, yes. Uh, you, your experience is the same as before and the added benefit is uh, uh, the exhaust is actually water. Oh. So you you're not harming the environment. Uh, this uh, with oxygen. Uh, what about economy wise in terms of cost? So uh, um would that be competitive you know, to the gas? You, you you always have to attain the economies of scale before you can start doing that. But I think as a concept, uh, you know, Toyota is banking big on this. Uh, now Toyota, if you remember, the first one to come up with a very workable hybrid, yeah. which and they gave our, uh, you know, the hybrid in cities, uh, the gas uh, mm. electric hybrid was giving 50 to 55 in cities, oh. and and then now they have a fully electric hybrid. What that means is that you plug it on the electric yes. uh, outlet, and that is equally good. Uh, now the next one they are coming up with the hydrogen fuel cell car. Maybe California as a state may also provide some subsidies because it's very eco-friendly state. True. You know. So here is a small to, wrinkle to there. Just to you know give a push for this. Right. So here is a small wrinkle there. The subsidies for hydrogen fuel cell cars ran out last ah, year, oh, okay. and now <laughs> Toyota is actively lobbying Washington to say you know put them back because we have invested all this money right. and and done this. I, okay, we are a little bit late, but you know you should at least give us a chance. Uh, for for instance this excellent uh, rebate from the government both california state as well as the federal government if you want to own an electric car mm, so mm. Uh, having done this thing um, i can i can relate to that so if you put up a solar panel uh, display uh, solar panel to uh, you know augment the power uh, you get a break there no ah, taxes okay on an, in addition to that when you buy an uh, electric only car you get a tax break both from the state as well as from the center okay So it kind of underwrites a part of the expense. Yeah, yeah. And in initially. Yeah. In addition to that, uh, California sweetens the deal by giving you access to what is called as the high occupancy vehicle lane. Oh, okay. That means if yeah, any yeah. car has two people or more, you get a special lane. Correct. Now an electric car gets a special lane benefits. Okay. Even in spite of a. even though you may not be having you know three four people exactly, or, ah, exactly. Okay, okay. so there are a lot of uh, deals that uh, have captured the imagination of uh, uh, californians so that that is well received so let's try and see let's let's wait and see how uh, the hydrogen fuel cell car yes. is fair and uh, you know california you know i would rather treat it as a country not as a state <laughs> it is it's yeah. as large as <laughs> I, and no they have always been in the forefront of uh, innovations and you know forefront of A change and another thing you know they are 
they are different than other US cities and uh, that, that that's true and so they bet big on uh, some of these things too. actually and not everything pulls off yeah. but it doesn't matter you know there are uh, people who are willing to accept uh, Yes. something new right right whether it is yoga or whether it is ayurved or right. whether it is uh, you know microsoft or you know everything right, 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 right. i think it's a most innovative type of a group and of course they have a massive amount of settlers from all over the world right, right. and who are contributing to this i'm very sure which i will also play a smaller role or bigger role oh yes uh, this uh, nadalas and pichai can also facilitate this process i'll be sure to tweet them <laughs> when this thing goes live <laughs> so that if they have a chance to look at it they can uh, yeah. uh, you know they can listen to this conversation right um, thank you very much professor for yeah. sharing your thoughts on